Shabbat Perak Yud Aleph, Mishnah Bet. Now, in the last Mishnah, we're in the middle of talking about Avara Mi Rishut Le Rishut, transferring from one position, one place to another. And in our last Mishnah, we saw Rabbi, we said a machloka between Rabbi Kiba and the Chachamim. And the question was, if I'm taking something, let's go back to the last Mishnah, if I want to take something, uh, here we are, uh, Perak Aleph Mishnah, uh, here we go. If I want to take something, Mi Rishut Yachid, if I want to take something from one Rishut HaYachid to another Rishut HaYachid, and there's a Rishut HaRabim Be'emsa, and there's a public domain in the middle, the Rabbi Kiva says, you're Chayab, and the Chachamim say, you're Patur. Okay? So the Mishnah says, so we want to know, Mishnah is going to talk with this, the Chachamim say, you're Patur. Why are you Patur? Says the Mishnah, Ketzad. How is it true that if I transfer something from one Rishut HaYachid to another Rishut HaYachid, and there's a Rishut HaRabim in the middle, when, in which case, is that Patur? So the Mishnah says the following, Shte Gizuz Tarot. Gizuz Traot are balconies of some kind. Okay, I have two balconies. Zo Kineg Zo Birishut Rabim. If I transfer, if I go from one opposite the other Birishut Rabim, let's go to, not New York, London. Eaton Place in London. I've got a balcony here. And let's move up in the street. Okay, I've got a balcony and a balcony. And I've got a Rishut Rabim in the middle. And let's assume that this is a Rishut Rabim. So I have two balconies, and I want to pass something. I've got a really long pole, and I want to pass one pole from one side to the other. That's our Mishnah. Okay? Hamoshit v'hazorek mizo lazo patur. Now, use your imagination. Please, um, in this case of, the, of London, use your imagination. Assume that it's not tent fachim in the air. So they're very low porches. So I've got two low porches. Now, they have the reshuta yachid, each one, because they have that gate around it. We're going to assume that it's low. And if I start to pass across the road, zo kinegizo, that's what the Mishnah says. Zo kinegizo b'rishut harabim, hamoshit v'hazorek mizo lezo. If I throw from one to the other, I'm patur. But the Mishnah says, hayushteyem bidiyota achat. If they both are bidiyota achat on one side, on one side of the alley, then hamoshit chayav v'hazorek patur. If we're on the same side of the street, if I want to pass from this one to this one, then the Mishnah says, if I throw it, again, we're assuming it's low. We're assuming we're ten tfachim, we're under ten tfachim. If I throw it, I'm patur. Because remember, we said, kluta lav mishahun chadami. It's as if, let's look back, kluta lav mishahun chadami. If it's hung in the air, let's go back here, I throw it. Now, where I'm stopped right here. The brachachamim say, it's lav kibishahun chadami. It's not as if it's hun uh, if it's place. And therefore, therefore, I'm not chayat. But if I, if I, if I give it over, why, then the Mishnah said, but the, the, the Chachamim said, if I transfer it, Hamoshit, if I transfer it, Chayab. Oh, why should I be Chayab? The Mishnah says the following. This was the Oda Avodah. This was the way, the, the service of the Leviim in the Midbar, and when they transferred the beams of the Mishka. Okay? Now, remember, they had Agalot, and they were transferring the beams of the Mishka and the beams of the, let's see. Let's see if I can find a nice picture of the Amude. Amishkan. Okay? That, I don't know what Google is going to give me, but it should give me something normal. Here we are. Okay, each beam, these are, these are the beams, the size of the, of the beams of the Mishkan. Remember the Mishkan here? These are the beams. Okay? Each beam is very long. It goes into a socket, and they had to be transferred. How they transfer it, you can see this image of the Machon Amigdash, them putting up these Amudim. Oh, that's actually the Chatser, but whatever, you get the point. These are the Amudim that are in the silver sockets. Can I make it a little bigger? Yeah, here's a silver socket. Here's one of these amudim. How do they transfer them? The Mister said they transferred them on agalot. This was the avodah of levim. Shte agalot zo achar zo b'shut harabim. When they would finish, when they would continue, continue finish transferring, they had two agalot, one in front of the other. Now I made you a rudimentary picture. Each agala, here you have the beams. This is my facsimile of the beams that I drew for you with my rudimentary word, word, uh, Microsoft Word drawing program. And here's your agala. Now, each one is higher than 10 tfachim. So therefore, since each one is higher than 10 tfachim, then sta- the guy standing here is in Rishut HaYachid. Because we've learned, I don't know if we've ever learned, but if you have an, a mood, if you have a place that we're going to actually learn right now in the next Mishnah, but if I have an area that's 4 tfachim by 4 tfachim and 10 tfachim high, that's Rishut HaYachid. So the Kohen is standing on Rishut HaYachid. Go back to our Mishnah. Shte agalo zawachazo b'rishut rabin. They would transfer, they would pass the krashim, these beams, from one to the other. But they wouldn't throw them. So therefore, this is, and this is exactly what the, this is what the, the Mishnah is trying to tell us. Let's go back to my drawing. 
Here you have an imaginary Rishut HaRabim. I'm going to delete this guy because I don't need him, so it won't be confusing. Well, this is a bird's eye view of Rishut HaRabim. Okay, imagine, I doubt they had double yellow lines, but whatever, in the, in the Midbar. They're traveling down the Midbar. So the Mishnah says that the way they would, when they finish, and they're setting up the Mishkan right here, okay, then the, 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 the Levi'im would transfer one guy standing here, remember we're looking from above, from my drone, and, and he's, he would pass, they would pass from one to the other, we'd pass it over to the next guy. They would just pass it over. And so therefore, from one to the next, to the length of Rishut Rabin, they would pass. But the Bartonura says, uh, that's what the Avodat Halavim, they wouldn't, be, they wouldn't throw. Okay, Hayu, okay, I Moshiti Mizelaze, they would pan, transfer from one to the other, above ten Tfachim. And the length of Rishut Rabim, it's by length, is in the middle. Ketzad, Agalod Zorach Hatu Rishut Rabim. We have Agalod one after the other Rishut Rabim. They're one after the other. Upokiyah Mishkan. And the unloaders, the teamsters in the Mishkan, the Levim, Ayu Moshitin Motam Sha'al Agalod, Sha'etzlo, and Smuchot to Kovot. May Moshitin, the Elushif Nayim, they would pass up from one to the next, one to the next. He'd passing up. Cholachad Ma'agalod, Rishut Hayachim. Each one was a Rishut Hayachim. Aye, but what about the, what about the width wise? What about the width of Rishut Rabim? They would only pass the length. Okay? But they would never pass, uh, if the Rishut Rabim is in the middle, okay, they would never pass in this way, they would never pass from one side to the next. They would never tra- traverse. And that's, that's why our Mishnah said, let's go back to London, that's why our Mishnah said that when you, the way of passing, okay, we said, remember we said, Kluta la bichun chadami, but the way of passing, Throwing, so throwing is never. But when they would pass, this was the way they would pass from one to the next in the, the Levim. They would never pass from one side to the other. And that's why our Mishnah says explicitly, okay, Hamoshit, okay, if, if you are Zo Keneged Zo, if you're going across Rishut Rabim, then Patur. Even a Moshit is Patur. But if they are Shteyam Bidiyuta Achat, then both Moshit, Moshit is Chayav, and Zorek is Patur. How do they know that's how they did Levim? There must have been a Masora. There must have been a tradition that they passed on, that Chazal knew. Let's continue with the Mishnah. Chuliyat tabor v'hasela. If I have chuliyat tabor, if I have a bor, or a sela. Let's go back to, I made you a, a little chart. This is a sela. Imagine, this is a shita rabim, and there's like a, there's a protrusion of rocks, and it's ten tzvachim high, and it's at least four by four wide. It can be much, much wider. It doesn't matter. But it's at least four by four wide. So the Mishnah says, or I have a hole. You're going to have to imagine, I couldn't find a picture. You have a ditch with a, with an area of dirt around it. And the ditch is at least 10 tfachim deep. And the, di- the ditch is at least 10 tfachim deep. And four by four wide. So I have chuliyat abor. Chuliyat abor means the ditch. In, in, interestingly, even if you dug a ditch, let's see if I can find you a quick picture. Not like Google Images, you can find anything. So they dug a hole here. Assume this is four tfachim by four tfachim and 10 tfachim deep. But it can also include, see the area of dirt around it? That's called chuliyat tabor. Oops, right, sorry. So if the, if the, the ditch from the top of the chuliyat down there is ten tfachim, that's enough to make it a rishut hayachid. That's what the Mishnah says. Chuliyat tabor, v'hasela, or a rock. Shem gvohim asar, they're ten tfachim high. V'rachavam arba, and they're four by four wide. Hanotel mehem v'noten al gabam. If you take from out of them, or you place something onto them, chayad. Why? Let's go back to my ditch here. Oh, let me find my ditch here. This is, uh, this is great. Because this hole in here is a Rishut HaRabim, Rishut HaYachid. Since it's deep, four by four, four by four deep. If I take something, if I take the flag and put it in the hole, that's a transfer from Rishut HaRabim to Rishut HaYachid, or the other way around. And this is what the mission is telling us. And remember I told you, this Agala, as long as it's ten Tfachim, it's four by four and ten Tfachim high, that's how we know, because that's the definition of a Rishut HaYachid. That's what the Mishnah says. They're Gvoin Asara V'Rechabim Arba Hanotel Mayem If you take something from them and put it into Rishut HaRabim or Noten Al-Gabam from Rishut HaRabim Chayab then it's Chayab Pachot Mikain but if it's less if it's less than that height let's go back to my 4x4 four four. what if it's what if it's not 10 Tfachim high but it's 7 Tfachim it's 8 Tfachim high in that case the Mishnah says it's, it's Patur it's not called, that's not called the Makom Chiyub. That's one of the definitions of something called, it's called a Carmelite. We've had this before, we saw this, uh, we saw this at the very beginning of the Mishnayot that we learned. Let me see if I can find it. That's called a Carmelite. Carmelite is a Makom Patur, that's Patur. It's neither here nor there. Bartunur says it's Ke'armelite, like an Almana. It's like a Nishtehin, Nishtehir. It's not Rashid Rabim, 
and it's not Rishon the Yachid, and therefore it's Patur. We'll stop here. If you have any comments or questions, as always, I hope the drawings were clear. Long Mishnah, arsbolter.gmail.com. We'll dedicate our learning to the memory of my father, Rav Simcha Ben Yisrael Kalman. Have a good day.